Hi, I'm Kathleen McWain, and I want to invite you to my Saturdays are free beginners watercolor classes. Every class that you attend, when you paint with me, at the end of the class, you will have a painting that you're proud of, and you will have learned many things that have you on the road to enjoying watercolor painting on your own. I think it has to be fun to get everybody to relax, you know, stop and take a few breaths. And I can do this attitude. And it takes very little materials. These are the colors that I teach people how to paint with. And they're the primary colors, the secondary colors, and then brown and a dark blue or a black. And guess what? Every one of those colors is in this little kit. If you have those colors right now, jump on with me this Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. I live in Texas, that's Central Time. You can join me wherever you are on Zoom. What you need to do to have your own invite and to receive the pattern that we're gonna be using when we paint on Saturday mornings, visit my website, waterbrushteacher.com, W-A-T-E-R-B-R-U-S-H-T-E-A-C-H-E-R.com. And on that front page, on the home page, you'll see a sign up for my newsletter. And if you'll sign up, you'll receive a letter that gives you more details. I hope you will join me. Again, that's waterbrushteacher.com. I'm Kathleen McWain. And every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., I have a beginner's watercolor class at 9 a.m. Central Time on Zoom. Thank you. Can't wait to paint with you. Watch as I paint this hibiscus. This is one of the paintings that we paint during the Saturday mornings our free watercolor classes that I teach on Zoom. First thing we'll do is take the yellow, load the brush, load the water brush with yellow. You want to clean the brush to make sure it's not too wet, and then you go back into the tray to pick up the color. You put that brush down and you pull out the color on the hibiscus petal. You don't go back in and mess with your paint to try to fill in everything. We're not using a crayon, we're using a watercolor brush. So as you watch, you'll watch me load the brush, go over to the painting, put the brush down, pull the color out, onto the paper and then pick the brush up and go back and start over again. I treat each petal separately so that I have white space in between the petals, which creates more brilliance with watercolor. It's the white that you can see through the color, the transparent watercolor paint, and it's the white next to it that creates the brilliance that watercolor paint will offer. Now I'm gonna clean my brush by wiping the brush on the paper towel and then squeezing and the brush is all clean. And that's the only time I squeeze my brush is when I'm cleaning it. Now I'm gonna load my brush with the red. And the hibiscus, the yellow part of the hibiscus is dry. 
And now I'm going to use red and create the center of my hibiscus. And there's a lot of color on that trade, just a lot of red. But I'm going to probably go back into the red on my palette to create the centers because I want it to be deep, dark red a real strong red. It's not going to be the transparent color that I painted the palette, the patterns with. I'm sorry, the petals with. See, I've got the tip of my brush loaded and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to lay that brush down right in the center of that petal and pick it up. And then I'm going to turn my painting so that it stays comfortable to make that brush stroke on each one of the petals. So there's another one. And then this petal is large, so it's going to get more than one. Pick the piece of paper up with your painting on it and turn it so that your hand is comfortable so it's easy to make a brush stroke. And each one of those brush strokes with the red starts in the center of the flower and goes around. Now you don't really see it as the center yet, but you will as the painting progresses. Now then I'm going to put that color down on each one of the little seed on this on the center on the on the part that comes out of the center of the hibiscus. And so that's just a little bit of red. It's kind of a wash of red, so those are going to be pink looking. And I just laid the tip of the brush down and did each one of those. They don't really look like circles, but they I mean, I didn't really paint a circle, but they look like a circle. Now I clean my palette. I'm kind of a stickler for that because when I don't, I make mistakes of picking up colors that I don't want. And watercolor paint is meant to be kept clean. And so it gets muddy if you're not careful when you have several colors mixed on your tray. And as you can see, the tray is plastic and it does stain, but it is clean. It's not gonna be picked up by the color. Now then, I'm putting my brush down into that red and I'm pulling that red out a little bit. And that's to soften the color just a little bit. It's still very, very bright. And also to increase the amount of uh, the, the distance that that red covers. So you just lay it down and pull out the color a little bit. And I'm softening that edge of the red as I do that. And the water that stays on the flower is what creates the, makes everything softer. And I'm finished with it at this step. Now, I will go back into that later into the painting, but not right now. Okay, now I'm going to take this light green. Now, you can use any green that you have. But the light green is the one that stands out the most, I think, and is the most brightest color. The other green I have is a, is kind of a fall, beautiful fall color. And I thought that it would be best to do 
the little hibiscus with the bright green. And you just load the brush with the color, then you go over to the painting and you make a brush stroke and you pick up your brush and put the brush back down again. You don't go back and forth filling in the color. We are not using a crayon. We're using a water brush or a watercolor brush. You treat a watercolor brush the very same way. This is a watercolor brush. So I'm using it just as I would a watercolor brush. Okay, and those are drying. All those colors are drying. And now I'm going to do the stem. And the best way to do a stem is to always do broken lines. Let the eye read it as a stem. See, this is one I painted a while back, and that's how I did it. But if you try to do a real long mark, most likely it's not going to be very pretty. So by just laying in short brush strokes with the tip of your brush, you will make a real pretty stem. So now then, we're going to go back into those little seeds. I waited until the seeds were dry. And so those little pink seeds are going to get a little shadow underneath the seed. And I'm going to show you real close what I'm doing so that you can see it. So the tip of that brush, and I'm going to just do a little shadow underneath each one of those seeds. And you can see that that's not actually round, but as I do that shadow, it makes it even look more round. Now then, I'm going to do that stem. I'm not going to go all the way down into the center of it, but and there's it doesn't matter that the, it has those openings. So I'm just pointing to the center of the flower, and that's what visually the flower looks like. It looks like that goes all the way down into that center. And if we'd done a long stem, we might have taken away from how fresh that little center looks. So it's best, I'm, when we do the black lines, I will most likely draw a line all the way from the stem into the center. But that's a very thin line in comparison to what my brush stroke will do. So now then we're going to do the yellow again. And I hope I will straighten out my view so that you can see more. But I'm loading the brush with yellow. And now then what we're going to do, it's nice to have the camera close still. But I lay the brush down and I go into the red. So you see, again, we're going to soften that edge. And I can just lay the brush down again and go in. Eventually, I've got to clean that brush every once in a while because when I go into the red, I'm picking up red. And I don't want my, my petals to become more red than yellow. So I'm just pulling that brush into the red. And you can see, I don't stay and mess in my paintings. I just put that brush down, I do what I'm there to do, and I pick it up and get out of the painting. 
It's when you go back in and when you move your brush sideways. Those are the things that will begin to make your painting look overworked. And that's when it's real easy to create mud. So now I'm going to do another layer on the leaves. Very simple there. Just lay that brush down. I don't go back in and fill in areas. I may go in and lay down the brush and do a brush stroke on top of it, but I don't go in just to fill in white spots because those white spots are, are help make the color really brilliant. So there we go. I'm cleaning my brush now and it's time I believe to let the painting dry so that we can then use the black lines and I'm cleaning my palette again I keep my palettes real clean so I believe the painting is just drying now I'm going to go back in and soften some of the red just a little bit more, just really teaching how you can do that. If you want um, just, you know, less brilliance or more of a blending, this is the way that you would do it. And that, as long as that petal is wet, it is continuing to soften all of the colors that it moistens. So I'm just showing you, you know, how much you can do and still have a lot of brilliant color. And I am painting on 100% water cotton watercolor paper. It's Fluid 100. The company that has Fluid 100 cuts six by eight sheets just for me, for my classes. And these are just wonderful, 100% cotton watercolor paper to paint on and to learn how to paint. The brush is made by Pentel, and the watercolor paint is Daniel Smith. I am an ambassador for Daniel Smith. If you visit their website, I'm one that listed as one of the ambassadors, and you can see more of my art. I'm proud of those many years of painting with Daniel Smith. But my beginner classes certainly don't require that. So that painting is just drying now. And it's about time to create the sketch on top with the black lines. And I show you how I do this. So I want my hand to be real loose. When I do this, I don't want to be tight. It's not outlining. It's actually a sketch on top of the painting. And all my students eventually do it just beautifully. Sometimes they have trouble relaxing and getting started, but it's in no time at all. And they are so happy that they learn how to do this. And like I said, it's a sketch on top of the painting. It is not all 
a perfect outline for one thing you can't make any mistakes with it and I use my students use a sharpie ultra fine My favorite black line pen is a Prismacolor 0.03. The Sharpie is not actually an artist tool, so it's not as light fast as you might want it to be. But it's a wonderful one for my students to use because they don't break the tips off with the getting used to the roughness of the watercolor paper. Watercolor paper has just a little bit of tooth. So by putting that little bit of black and leaving the little bit of white in the center, the center is real, takes, it kind of pulls the eye. Everybody knows the seed is going into that space. And I just frequently do that little mark at the, right below the flower. I just like it. Now doing the sketch around the leaves. Now I'm going to show you where to sign your painting. I'm going to teach you about why and where you should sign your painting. So the painting, your signature needs to be on the inside of the art. And the reason is, is watercolor paper, watercolor paintings should be matted first. So there's a little bit of a difference between the glass. It's not right up. If it's matted, it's not, the glass is not right up against the painting. And so you want to have your name on the inside of the art. Thank you for joining me for Saturdays Are Free. Visit my website, waterbrushteacher.com and sign up to receive your invite.